Welcome to a new Tour Confidential. I'm Jeff Ritter in for Jessica Marksbury. Joining us this week, we have from Golf Magazine, Alan Bastable, Golf.com's Mike Walker, and live via Skype, Gary Van Sickle from Sports Illustrated. Guys, big news this week, uh, it's Ted Bishop. Uh, he took to Twitter to defend Tom Watson and defend Nick Faldo, and he went out and got himself impeached. It's a big story, it's still evolving, but Gary, the question of the day is, Bishop was not only fired, he also lost all the privileges that come with being an ex-president of the PGA of America. Did Bishop get what he deserved for that one offensive tweet? We're talking about a lot of money. That president gets like eight or nine hundred thousand dollars a year, plus a you know great stipend in retirement. It's a little severe for that, but I don't think this impeachment was just for this last offense. I mean, think about it. He's the guy responsible for Tom Watson and that whole fiasco. He was the guy responsible for the screw up at the PGA at Valhalla in the last hole, where the guys in the last group were allowed to hit up because it was getting too dark. Because oh yeah, the PGA didn't start soon enough, and now he called Ian Poulter a little girl. In my opinion, three strikes and you're out. It is a harsh penalty, but uh, I think it's harder than it should be. But I, I don't have a problem with him being impeached. Uh, I don't know about his benefits being lost, but it, it wasn't like his first offense. All right. I, I don't know, Gary. I, I, I think this really was just a reaction to the one tweet. I didn't get the impression that this was the third strike. I got the impression that this was a fast-moving decision, a reaction by the PGA of America to, to that tweet. What did you think? I mean, I do think that uh, what Gary says has a lot of validity. I don't think there was a strong group within the PGA of America who was pleased with Bishop's performance and said, oh, yeah, this is the guy. If he gets in hot water, I'm going to stand behind him. I'm going to go to the mattresses for him. Uh, I mean, little girl, I mean, it touches on sexism and exclusion in golf, which is really a third rail issue. And I think that when you add that to the fact that even if he had called him a crybaby or anything, the, the real unprofessionality, like to go on Twitter as a guy like that and go, hey, I'm going to, I'm going to call Ian Poulter a little girl. I mean, it, it seems insane. I mean, it seems insane that, that somebody in that position would even do that. So I don't really think they had much of a choice as to fire him. As far as stripping all his honors, I mean, maybe that gets a little excessive, but I think that's really yeah. beside the point. Yeah, and I, I don't think he, I don't doubt that he regrets it. I mean, it was one of those things where he posted it and then started getting tweets back from, from angry followers. And I think at that moment, um, he said it in, in an interview yesterday that, yeah, I screwed up and I think he knew it. But I, I don't even know if this was a third strike. This might have been like a 33rd strike. I mean, Ted Bishop, was, he's always been a bit of an outlier. And I think when he came on board two years ago, there was sort of some excitement. Here's this guy. He's got this blog. He's pretty active on Twitter. He uh, obviously one of his first big moves was to, uh, uh, to battle the USGA on the anchoring ban. This was a different type of PGA president. And I think there was some excitement around that early on. And then I think people started to realize this guy this guy was maybe a bit of a publicity hound. Certainly not in for the wrong reasons. Did a lot of good in his two years, but uh, you know he was out there and he liked being the face of the PGA of America and ended up uh, biting him in the rear. Yeah, you almost wonder if he was the right fit. I wonder, Gary, you've been around the game a while and got to know Bishop a little bit. Was he just the wrong personality, the wrong person at the wrong time for this job? Well, I think, I think everything we just said about him, I think those were all pluses. I thought the fact that he was, you know, a John McCain style maverick was maybe just what the PGA of America needed. The problem is they're all a lot of straight arrow, look ahead, you know. When you're a PGA club pro, the guys who are successful are the guys who can be nice to 400 members every day, 24 hours, hours, hours a day, 365 days a week. Uh, a guy like this is not does not fit that mold. A guy who speaks his mind is not successful as a head pro because he says the wrong thing to one member, much like going on Twitter, and you know that member gets you fired and you move on. So the guys who are just successful are as bland as milk toast. So while I like a lot of Ted's personality, I like a lot of the things he said, uh, he's the head of an organization where everybody needs to be like a robot and not say the wrong thing. So in that regard, maybe he was the wrong Fit, but I thought he might be able to change mentality and do some positive things. And, and unfortunately, he shot himself in the foot on a, an issue of sexism where, you know, there can't, be any, there can't be any room for debate, you know? I'm not going to defend what he tweeted, but you can understand why he would be upset over what's been happening over the last couple of weeks. He's, he's angry about the backlash that Tom Watson got. He sort of felt like that 
the PGA of America wasn't really there to defend Tom Watson as he yeah. sort of was getting buried for being the captain. So not to defend what Ted Bishop tweeted, but you can sort of understand why he was at sort of a more emotional place uh, this past week. I believe Sigmund Freud calls it transference. You, you're upset <laughs> about Tom Watson, so you tweet about Nick Faldo. So I think there's no question that happens. And uh, I mean, it's a good point. I think that this is still fallout from the Ryder Cup. I mean, it's all part of that. It's such a big event for the PGA Championship. The Watson pick turned out to be a disaster. I think it sounds like now you hear murmuring people in the PGA of America are kind of distancing some of themselves from that. That's what Bishop's saying. So yeah, I think it's more fallout. But yeah, that it, it comes out over a tweet about Nick Faldo is one of the kind of strange side notes to this. Yeah, yeah I mean, it's, it's been a fascinating glimpse into the politics of golf the last few weeks since the, since the Ryder Cup fiasco uh, started to unfold. But remember, nobody, when, when, when Bishop picked Tom Watson, everybody seemed to love that pick. So the fact that he True. took so much crap for that sort of, you know, irks me a little bit. I mean, obviously it couldn't have, that, those, those, that week couldn't have really turned out any worse. But again, it goes back to the, the, I think Gary used the word maverick. And this was a guy who was, screw it, whatever public sentiment is, I'm going with Watson. He's my guy. We need to mix it up. Watson's going to be the guy to get the team back on the rails. Didn't work out, but, uh, so it's easy to be critical in hindsight. But uh, it's, been, uh, it's been pretty fascinating how it's played out the last yeah. couple of weeks. Maybe, if, maybe another lesson is if you're emotional over the U.S. Ryder Cup performance, you should not read Ian Poulter's autobiography. It's just <laughs> going to make you even crazier. Uh, guys, we'll leave it there. Thanks for stopping in. Uh, for Alan, Mike, and Gary, I'm Jeff. We appreciate the time, and we will see you next week on Tour Confidential. Mm -hmm.